Hi guys, it's me again, I'm back. Today I'm going to show you guys my home sim, so the sim I practice on, you know, before races, before test days, just to keep the momentum going when I'm not working. It's Fanatec because I find it's got the best sort of stuff. I was actually um, given this sim by a sponsor for the year, so I was very, very lucky. So thank you to Box Transport for that. I actually go to another sim that I normally book in weekend before a race. It's uh, Arden International. I up in Banbury, I go there and because it, it's like a this million pound sim that F1 drivers, you know, the same spec that F1 drivers use. So I go there as well because that's just like something else. I think one of the most amazing things about the Arden sim that I go to is they've obviously got F3 and F4 drivers and they actually go to the tracks and they bring back their data, you know, from real life and they put it and overlap it with the actual sim and it shows how, you know, spot on the sim is because they're literally doing the same pace that they were doing on the sim the week before what they were doing on the track with the same conditions and everything so when you actually see that in front of you it, it proves how good the sim is and how professional and how good the spec is you know it's amazing um but yeah i'll be showing you guys that soon because i'm going there in a couple days to practice for alton park yeah I'm looking forward to that the new F3 cars that they're racing this year. It's very hot. <laughs> so these are the F3 and F4 cars that Arden race. Um, they've done a lot of F4 that for like years, but this year they're racing in F3, which are the ones up the end for their first debut. So that's gonna be really good to watch. And hopefully I can get a going one at the end of the year. It's actually the same one as the Praga, Cosworth. It's got exactly the same buttons. <laughs> But yeah, I've always wanted to try an F3, so hopefully this year I can. Who have you got to ask one of them? Gary. <laughs> Gary, can I drive one of the F3s? <laughs> Alex Connor's F3. He's done F4, I think, two years. He did really well. I know him quite well. He's a great lad and a very good driver. And then you've got Frederick Lubin, who's first year in F3. He did F4 last year. He had a very good year and now he's gone straight up to F3, which is obviously brilliant. You want to go F4, F3 in that sort of way. So yeah, he's, he's looking like he's going to have a good year. This, this is my Brick Car trophy that we won, me and Danny. Our name's at the bottom. This, this is the one we get to keep, so I get to keep this at home. It might go to Timepiece and the nightclub, because obviously they sponsored me last year, alongside Fox Transport and Motorsport Run. But yeah, I love this trophy. Now on to bigger and better things, so. Yeah, I take it everywhere with me. I take it to the toilet. Go on then. <laughs> So this is where me and Steve look at data, so you can literally the same data as we get up on the race day. You've got your brake traces, you've got your throttle traces, and then you can see where exactly you are in the corners and what you're doing. And today I'm working on my brake pressure. We need more ones like this, so I'm hitting it first, the strongest point first, rather than going 80%, 100%. I need to go straight away 100%, then level it down. Also got my fastest lap up here, my first session, which is 134, which is really good. Stay on the pace for my first session. And normally I knock off, you know, a good second and a half, maybe two seconds throughout the day. So we'll see what we do at the end of the day. I get Harry Bow if I knock off a second. So that's my aim. They make me go quicker. They should sponsor me. <laughs> Harry Bow, will you sponsor me? So, as you can see, this is exactly what I'm doing wrong. You can see I'm hitting the brake there and then going back up. I need to do, uh, let's make up on this one, straight up, back down. So I'm doing it a bit there on the first corner, but the first corner is obviously not a very big, big braking zone anyway, so that's fine. Same with the second corner, you're hardly braking. Next corner, you do need to brake quite a lot because you roll a lot of speed through um, bus stop, so that's very important. As you can see, hardly braking there, but I don't know what's going on there, I need to work on that. And then all the other ones, so it's just my first three, I need to work on all the other ones are pretty much perfect. But what we'll do is we'll overlap my data in the next session with this data so that we can see if I've improved, which I should do on every corner because Steve's told me what to do on every corner. 
There's been loads, loads of famous drivers in a sim, which is really cool. You know that it's proper sim when you've got those sort of drivers that have been in it. And, and now helping to develop it. Yeah, exactly. Like, F1 drivers have been in this sim and developed it. So it's, you know, perfect. The, the way the sim used to operate was that the guys were welcome to come in here and work in, in the other sim as well. And quite often, people like Kvyat and Saints would come in here uh, for extra time in the sim. Uh, and they would help prepare data so that when the other drivers came in we knew that that was the setting uh, to be. Dan Tickton um, came in here probably the most natural driver that has ever been um, very good. Oscar Piastri you probably knew he was going to get to F1 um, he's on the um, Renault program now but yeah there's been some very very good drivers through here I'm trying to think of all the others uh, De Costa, uh, Lewis Williamson, uh, Gasly, yeah. <laughs> um, Pierre Gasly. So this is uh, what we call the team sim. It's exact, identical to the other sim. Uh, the only difference is usually when we have the team in, we can get more people in this room. Um, we can analyze the data. We can go through a few things with the drivers and we can also have all the drivers together. The other sim next door tends to be more one-on-one -on -one or two drivers at most, whereas here sometimes we'll put three drivers in together. But the sims, the data, everything works in exactly the same way. The difference is it's live data from the car. So normally with a simulator you're guessing what a car could do and uh, the tracks can be fairly accurate, but if the car isn't, it's unrealistic. And most simulators have a car that's very, very easy to drive, and it doesn't really test the driver. Uh, racing cars are difficult to drive. If you can get the live data off the racing car and set the sim up off the real racing car, make it as realistic as possible, that's the advantage that you've got. Uh, most simulators are one and a half, two seconds quicker than the actual circuit, um, because the, the sims are just too easy. Uh, they don't replicate the difficulties uh, that, that, that the cars um, give you. Um, when you. When you set it up from the real car, you're going to set the sim up, if anything, just a tad more difficult than the actual car is. And when I say a tad more difficult, within half a tenth to a tenth. But the simulators are so good that when we went to um, um, test the other day, uh, the actual time on the track and the actual sim time were within half a tenth. If it's more than two tenths away, then the sim's not working properly. So the cars have to be really accurate. You can only do that if you've got live data. Live data gives you an accurate sim. So we're in the F3 sim today, which I think works really well, mainly because it is so like similar to the Praga. You wouldn't have thought it is, but it is a lot similar. Mainly the power. Um, but also the brake on this sim and the gears are exactly the same around most tracks They're all the same. I'm in the same gears that I go around on the sim. They're the same gears I use on the actual track So it's just brilliant practice for me. So we'll see how we get on at Alton Yeah, he matched you fastest first second, good drive. 
motorsport. Did about three sessions on the sim with Steve coaching me at Alton Park. Uh, my aim was to get down to a 34 dead, but I managed to get down to the 33 8, so that's not too bad. Very happy with that, two attempts, and I thought, you know, I was going to go quicker, so I'm really, really happy. And yeah, just looking forward to the race. I know where the, uh, what gears I need to be in, I know where the braking points are, and how narrow the track is, and also where to overtake other cars on the track, which is obviously going to be a massive thing on the race because of traffic and Alton's a very bumpy and narrow track. So yeah, it's a shame Jimmy wasn't here today, but I'm going to bring him back definitely another time because I'm sure he'll love it here. So yeah, I'll see him at the race anyway. Next time you see me, you will see me testing in the Praga, hopefully. Uh, we're going to do a test day before Alton, just so I can get up to speed straight away when we have the Friday, because sometimes on the Friday you never know what the weather's going to do. You never know if you're going to get the whole half an hour due to red flags, and just to do a test day will help me a lot because I can get loads of time in the seat and that's what I need and I'm going to really push for that podium with Jimmy.